Good day, everyone. Welcome to lesson 2.3, Types of Bond Cleavage. Again, this is adapted from PSHS Chemistry 3, module lesson 2.3. For this lesson, we have three targets. First, to compare and contrast homolytic and heterolytic bond cleavage. Second, draw the product of a homolytic cleavage or a heterolytic cleavage. And third, to classify the product of a bond cleavage as a radical, carbocation or carbanion. So in the previous modules, we have been learning these two things. First, the potential nucleophiles and electrophiles in reactants. Second, the general types of organic reactions. So if we know these, then we are able to know the reactive sites of the molecules and how electrons move in a chemical process. Also, to predict the products of an organic reaction. So consider the following addition reaction. We have here an alkene reacting with HCl. So what could the product be? From here, we can predict that this would be an addition process. But we may have two possible products. So the chlorine atom would possibly attach to this carbon or to the other carbon, resulting in this structure. However, what happens in reality is that we only have one uh, product. So it's two chloropropane. It's the only product of the reaction. Now, what would enable us to deduce which of the two possible products would be the most likely product? Okay, so to do that, we would have to know first how organic reactions occur, how bonds are broken, and how bonds are formed. So that would be addressed by this module. So to add, we would have to learn how bonds are broken and how bonds are formed in order to more specifically predict the products of an organic reaction. So to start Ignite, we first define what a reaction mechanism is. So in grade 10, you have discussed reaction mechanism from the point of view of kinetics, okay? And you know already that it's a detailed description of how the chemical reaction occurs. So many organic reactions do not occur in a single step, but in a series of steps. So in grade 10, you were more concerned with which step was faster than the others, which is the rate determining step. However, in organic chemistry, we are more concerned about how electrons move for every step in the reaction mechanism, how bonds are broken, how bonds are formed, because eventually they will be dictating which products will be formed out of all the other possibilities. So the reaction mechanism there describes which, bond bre which bonds break and which ones form. The kinetics of the reaction, its reaction order and the relative rates of steps, but then again, we will probably not be dealing so much with the kinetics here. And for this part, I mean, of uh, the lesson. And then it also describes the conditions that the reaction takes place, the state of the reactants and products, the need for light or heat, or whatever other reagents that you might need for each step of the process the role of the solvent, and the role of the catalyst. So moving on to the types of bond breaking or bond cleavage. So you may have a different idea from or definition of the word cleavage. In this case, this, me, this describes a splitting or cleaving of a bond. Okay, so... First, we have homolysis, homolysis, or homolytic cleavage. This word is, um, I have heard a lot 
fact of uh, that uh, I have heard that it may be pronounced as homolysis or homolysis. I prefer homolysis because it gives emphasis on the word lysis and it reminds you that this involves a breaking. So in homolytic cleavage, the electrons in a covalent bond are equally divided between the atoms. So here we have a covalent bond being divided wherein the electrons are equally distributed between the two parts of the molecule. So each, atoms, each atom takes with it one electron from the covalent bond when it breaks, and we use a fish hook or a single barbed or a half-headed curved arrow to show the movement of electrons. So this is the fish hook or the single barbed curved arrow or the half-headed curved arrow, where the tail represents the electron source and the head represents the electron sink or where the electron is headed. So it shows that only one electron moves. So in this reaction, we, uh, we draw the curved arrow in this manner. So coming from the electron source, going to the electron sink, and then for the other electron, we also draw it in this manner. So we write it from the electron source, going to the electron sink, and one head or half head of the arrow. So also notice that these arrows are drawn on a single structure, uh, specifically on the reactant side. So we draw this electron, uh, we draw the arrow coming from this electron going towards where it's supposed to travel and not from here going there. Okay, so these would be drawn on the same side of the reaction. Okay, homolytic cleavage forms an unstable intermediate with a single unpaired electron called a radical. So from the previous process, it uh, noticed that homolytic cleavage or homolysis produces two radicals. Let's say A is an atom and B is an atom also. You're basically just producing two atoms. So in this case, a radical maybe an atom just like this so you have in this case we have chloride uh, cl2 form af uh, wherein after a homolytic cleavage you form cl and cl they're both uncharged meaning that they're they're not ions they're just atoms but at the same time they are radicals because they have a single unpaired electron in their structure, which would be represented by this dot showing an electron. Does it mean that it has an extra electron? No. This dot simply shows, simply emphasizes that it has an unpaired electron. However, this electron would be already a part of its original set of electrons, which would be equal to its original number of protons, and the number of protons and the number of electrons in its structure is basically, are basically equal. Therefore, it would not have any charge. Basically, this is just a chlorine atom. However, to emphasize the presence of an unpaired electron in this atom, um, a dot here is formed to emphasize that it is a radical. Again, because in light of this story from the reaction mechanism or from the process, the organic reaction, so we just draw it in this manner. But then again, just remember that in this case, the radical is no different from just simply an atom. Another example would be this. So similarly, um, they would have the same valence electrons. 
same number of valence electrons here for chlorine, the other for bromine. So there, this is basically two bromine atoms. Um, again, just being emphasized that these are radicals because of the unpaired electrons. And then finally, uh, I mean, for another example here, notice all of the use of all of the fish hooks. So here we have this structure and then we have this bond being cleaved. So notice also that fish hooks may be you drawn in this manner here, like they could be drawn on just one side of the bond or they could be drawn on two or on opposite sides of the bond. So here, this, has, this structure has been cleaved to form a bromine atom and then a carbon radical here. So this is, uh, this structure, in this structure you have uh, an unpaired electron at carbon. Okay, so again, radicals are unstable intermediates and they would tend to react immediately so that they can be more stable. So next, the other type of bond cleavage is heterolysis or a heterolytic cleavage. This is an equal division of electrons during the bond breaking process. So in this case, if we have A, B with a, bo with a covalent bond in between them, so depending on which one is Okay, so in this case, one of the atoms in the covalent bond being cleaved gets both electrons. Depending on which one is more electronegative, so either B gets all of the electrons or A gets all of the electrons. And in, in the different cases, then the resulting products would have different charges. If B is more electronegative, it's going to get all of the electrons and it will have a negative charge as a result. And A will be left with a positive charge. And in opposite, if A is more electronegative, then it's going to get the two electrons, have a net negative charge, and B would have a net positive charge. So we use a curved double barbed arrowhead to represent the movement of two electrons. Ito na yung normal arrow, we would say. So in this uh, reaction, we can represent the movement of electrons coming from this bond with this curved double barbed arrowhead. Yon. You have the arrowhead and then it's curved and then it's double barbed. Okay, again, notice that we draw the arrow only on one side most, uh, most of the time on the reactant side of the process only. So we do not draw it from here going here. Okay, so from here, we draw the arrow from the tail to the head here and then draw the product or the resulting location of these two electrons would be here na in the products. Or in this other case, if the electrons get transferred to just A, so there, there. So the movement of electrons will depend on the difference in electronegativities of A and B. The more electronegative atom will gain the electrons. Next. On the other hand, we could also have a carbon-heteroatom covalent bond. And if this undergoes a heterolytic bond cleavage, the carbon would, en would end up with either a positive charge or a negative charge depending on the difference in electronegativities. So in this case, let's say there's a heterolytic bond cleavage or a heterolysis and the electrons go to this carbon. So as a result, we would have an excess 
negative charge on this carbon and uh, a net positive charge on the other carbon. So this carbon would form a carbocation and this carbon would form a carbanion. So again, remember how they're pronounced. This is a carbocation and a carbanion. So do not read this as, as carbocation or, or carbanion. Again, this is a carbocation and a carbanion. Now, where's the CZ heterolytic bond cleavage? Because this is a CC bond. Let's look at some examples. So here, this we start we have started with this structure. No, remember that boron only has three electrons around it. One, two, three. Therefore, this uh, to complete its octet, it it usually shares electrons in a in a co in a coordinate covalent bond. Yes, so it leaches off. It leaches off from the electrons of the electron-rich oxygen. So anyway, in this structure, notice that because oxygen is more electronegative, so when this bond cleaves, it's going to get all of the electrons to form here, two lone pairs, and then there. That's what happens. So why has this structure resulted in two parts which do not have charges. So that's because the in the original charge, the boron atom already has a negative charge. And in this part, the oxygen atom already has a positive charge. So even if it gains an extra electron, because it has taken up one other electron here from which was supposedly uh, shared to boron. So here, instead of having a positive charge, add a negative charge, it becomes zero. And here it has a negative charge. Then because of the loss of that electron, it's supposed to have a positive charge with a negative, so zero. Next, we have this structure. And then this bond, again, is going to be cleaved. So we have the double-headed arrow. And then this time, notice that we have formed the chloride ion with a negative charge. And um, the rest of the molecule becomes a carbocation. And then here, again, uh, Here's an example of heterolysis or a heterolytic cleavage. So we have, this time, the cleavage is induced by another reactant. So because of the presence of OH- minus here, okay, so it's going to attack this part of the reactant, resulting in the cleavage of this bond. So these two electrons will be transferred or will be gained by this carbon, producing a carbon ion. And the H here will be leaving as H+. Plus. Okay, so, and then it's going to be reacting or combining with OH- minus to form H2O. So again, um, in this case, this can just be represented as this without the OH minus ion, and the product can just be written as this plus H plus. Okay, again, um, let me just emphasize that in this case, the other reactant has been drawn, therefore, we simply write H2O here because they're going to combine. In this case, however, 
remember that you could also have another reactant here. And then it may uh, be paired with the chloride ion here. However, um, it has just been simplified and also chloride is stable on its own. So it's written like that. But remember that in the system, pwede nga may mga other ions floating around in solution. So as a comparison between homolysis or homolysis and heterolysis, so here we have the uh, a general picture of a CH bond being cleaved. So for a homolytic cleavage between carbon and hydrogen, that would produce a there. So we represent the movement of electrons with fish hooks forming free radicals. Okay, so we can we can draw it in this manner there and there on one side of the bond or it can be drawn on opposite sides of the bond and again the product would just be free radicals on the other hand for heterolytic cleavage depending on where the electrons get transferred so we may produce a carbocation in this case and a hydride ion if the hydro if the electrons get transferred to the hydrogen or if the electrons stay with the uh, carbon there we, then we produce a carbon ion and the h leaves as just a proton so that ends the lesson for the navigate part draw the products of homolytic cleavage of the indicated bond for each of the following so in this case simply break the bond and produce free radicals number two by taking into account electronegativity differences, draw the products formed by heterolysis of the carbon heteroatom bond in each molecule. Classify the organic reactive intermediate as either a carbocation or, or, or a carbon ion. So here, where is the carbon heteroatom bond? So that would be this bond, which is more electronegative than that than uh, which is more electronegative between carbon and oxygen. I think you can answer that um, fairly easily. So whichever is more electronegative, that would be getting the two electrons in the bond. Whichever has lost an extra electron would have a positive charge. Whichever has gained an extra electron would have a negative charge. And if the carbon has an excess positive charge, it's going to be a carbocation. If it would have an excess negative charge, then it becomes a carbon ion. For letter B, here's the carbon heteroatom bond. For letter C, here's the carbon heteroatom bond. Remember that this bond is between carbon and lithium and not hydrogen. Finally, to not everything again. We have learned the types of bond cleavage for this lesson, and they are homolysis and heterolysis. Homolytic cleavage produces radicals, while heterolytic cleavage produces ions. And specifically for carbon, we may produce either carbocations or, cad or carbon ions. Okay, so again, I hope that this has helped you with understanding lesson 2.3, Types of Bond Cleavage. Thank you and goodbye class.